this demonstration, we have a little application here with a couple of pages um, that we can navigate between. And what we're going to look at is the new page flow diagram. So previously we had this type of layout where you can see the pages and if you click on one of them, you can see the relationship to other pages with the little icons at the top. Now you can also get this flow diagram shown up here. And here you can see the pages and the navigation between them represented as arrows. Furthermore, this actually monitors your application code. So for example, if I go to the edit page and I'm gonna add a new button, and in this button, I'm going to add a navigation event that navigates from the edit page to another page. For example, let's navigate back to the start page in this case. And then we'll go back to our diagram over here. You would see that now the arrow has two ends. So it's a bi-directional navigation from one page to the other. If I were to switch this to navigate to another page, to the, um, for example, the details page and go back to the diagram, now you can see the navigation again has been updated. So this diagram is very helpful for you to understand the relationship between pages and which page goes to another page. But that's not the only thing that the page flow diagram can do. You can actually use it to develop new pages and create all those navigations directly from the diagram. For example, if I drag and drop a new custom page on an existing page, this would automatically create a navigation event in the source page to the new page that I created. In this case, I'm also able to define, for example, variables or input parameters that would be passed into this page. Now, if I go to the page into which I drag this operation, there is now an action chain that has been created to do this navigation. So let's say I edit this page and actually add some data to this page. So we'll have something meaningful to bind um, the navigation form. So we'll just create a little table here with information about employees. And into this table, we can add a UI component that would actually invoke the navigation operation. So let's drag a hyperlink and drop it over here. I can rename it to be edit. And what we're going to do now is we're going to define an event over here. We're going to define a custom event in this case that would map to the click event. But you can see here that we can choose the action that was created for us directly from the page flow diagram. So now if we go back to the action, you can see here's the action that was created for us. It does the navigation to the edit page and we can modify this action that was created and just continue to develop it as needed. So in our case, what we want to do is we want to add a, an input parameter to this whole action, which would be the employee ID. We're going to map this input variable to be a parameter that we're passing to the destination page. And then in the page designer itself, we're going to map this parameter, uh, the input parameter to the section chain to the ID of the field of the row that we're currently on. All right, so now we have this whole thing tied in together um, with the navigation that was created again from the diagram. You can create even more complex rules. For example, we can drag and drop an if statement on one page. Then in the if, you can define the condition. In our case, for example, we're going to pick up one of the system variables. For example, we can pick up um, from the responsive section um, some navigation that is only two for large screens. So then on the if, we can add a navigate. And then the navigate can go to, for example, a new page that we're going to create, which would be the big page, because this is a large item. So you can see this is the navigation for the true case. And then we can add another navigation that would be for the false case. This would go to the small page. So again, using those approaches, we actually created an action chain in the page that has this if statement and the navigation is already there. So if we go to the page, here's the action chain that was created, the if and the two navigation, all created for us directly from the diagram. If we go back to the diagram, we can show you one more thing that you can do here beyond the if statement is you can also use a switch statement that you can see on the left side. So again, if we drag it onto the same page, 
we're going to bind later on this action chain to a, an event, but for now, we're just going to define, um, for example, events that are based on the value of a specific variable. So in case that this variable is equal one, we can do a navigation to one page, for example. So let's create page one for this. And then we can add another um, option for navigation from the same switch in case of a value that is two. Again, and again, we can do a navigate here to um, page two. So let's get page two. And again, when you're doing all of this from the page flow diagram, everything is created in the pages for you. So again, if we go to the page, we can go into the action chain. Now there's going to be a new action chain that is called the switch action chain with the two cases we defined already defined over here. 